dear viewers welcome to this episode of expert speaks very interesting things which are happening in india if the reports were to be believed last year the nri poured about 400 billion dollars into india a lot of money came into the bank fixed deposits fdi investment fpi investment and needless to say a lot of money has also gone into real estate there is something which is happening in the real estate to know what exactly is happening in the real estate the update for you to follow the trend and take appropriate decision in this episode i am going to talk to you my popular faculty member mr db mehta who is an expert on real estate this is nri money clinic for you and i am dr chandra khan but your financial guide for a happy living <laughs> NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, expert of the week is real estate expert, Mr. D.B. Mehta. Mr. D.B. Mehta is not somebody who is new to you. The videos in which he has participated have gone viral, has become very popular. He is the first person on our channel who educated the NRI community what they need to do when they buy the properties, when they sell the properties. Mr. D.B. Mehta, by profession, is a chartered accountant. He was a very illustrious IRS officer. He quit uh, his IRS profession for his love of business. He was the past chairman of Mangalore Stock Exchange. He was the past chairman of Kradai Builders Mangalore. He is also the, the chairman of Green Building Council of Mangalore. He is an independent director of Smart City of Mangalore. He has diverse interests, a man who has authority on any subject he wants to speak in. Uh, it's a great honor to bring Mr. D.B. Mehta again back on my channel. Thank you for the introduction. Mr. Mehta, sir, if I ask you to speak on real estate, 20 minutes is just not sufficient. I know the kind of depth you uh, have in this subject, uh, but within the limited uh, period of time that we have, let's update our audience on what exactly is happening in the real estate sector. You had spoken in one of your earlier videos about the real estate cycle, which is not known to many people. And it was an eye-opener for all of us. We have participated together on the television shows. And when you correlate the facts and figures you have put across, we realize there is a cycle which exists in the real estate as well. Where are we currently in this real estate cycle? What exactly is happening in India with the residential real estate? See, as you can uh, recall, in my last uh, episode on NRI Clinic, uh, I had mentioned that the previous uh, real estate bull run got over in 2013-14. The real estate cycle is roughly around eight years. So in one of the episodes, I had mentioned it very clearly that 2021-22, the bear cycle of the real estate is coming to an end and we are getting into the uh, upward cycle. Now we are just in the third year of the upward cycle and uh, this cycle will last for full eight years. So we still have a full five years more. So if anyone is having any such feeling that the real estate has run up a little and one should be cautious, I, I wouldn't subscribe to such a, a thought process because we are still in the beginning of the cycle. If you recall, we had also mentioned about the total number of inventories available in the ready to occupy or under construction category now ready to occupy in 2011 21 22 we had almost four years stock today the scenario is we have only one and a half years stock and we all know in india the real estate uh, completion cycle that is to uh, you know start with the land and to hand over the apartment is minimum three to four years so one and a half year stock is a very good position for the real estate to remain firm and bullish. Uh, Mr. Mehta, I echo your sentiments and I have been benefited from your observations earlier as well. So we ventured into real estate at an appropriate time and uh, everything you said worked as you predicted. The question is for a common man, how he can feel that what you say is happening. He needs to observe uh, things on the ground and say, is the real estate stagnant? Is it going up? How he can make out from uh, what he observes on the ground? Are there any uh, cues that he can pick up? 
See, there are uh, reports being published by uh, real estate uh, agencies like Anarok or JLL or uh, such other firms. So uh, these are readily available even on Google. They can search and read. Then the National Housing Board, the government agency, also publishes this report uh, on a quarterly basis of the real estate scenario. So that is also going to be very helpful for individuals to uh, have a look at. And uh, the ground reality also, you know, once you are looking to buy or invest, you will be doing some homework and you will be able to catch the ground reality. Now, if you look at the last uh, uh, two years, the stock, uh, you know, the, the growth in the sales has been phenomenal, but the growth in price has been still muted because there was huge excess supply of uh, ready to occupy stock available. So that's why the prices didn't move as much as the sales have happened. And now we are at the cusp of the price movement and the volume movement will not be as high as it was earlier, but it will still be in the range of around 20%. But price movement will be high. So this is the, you know, those who have missed the last one year or two years, it's, it's not so much lost and there's much more price movement left to be captured. So you mean to say that the cycle has uh, turned up and it's we are already into second or third year into it because there was an overhang of the uh, finished product which was there on the shelf. That's why there was not a visible uptrend on the pricing uh, which is noticed. But now that the, the completed uh, units uh, which are waiting is just about one and a half years. From here onwards, you expect the price push to be perceptible for people, which only means to say that if somebody is, there is a genuine uh, real estate buyer, he shouldn't be hesitating to buy at this point of time. Is is it a right inference? Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. I'll, I'll just give you some figures to substantiate what I have mentioned. Say like uh, in the seven major cities of India, in the second quarter of this year, the volume growth has been 36% vis-a-vis the second quarter of the previous year. But the price growth has been only 11%. Now, yeah. as we move forward, the volume growth will start showing us lower figure, but the price growth will show slightly higher figure. So I'm, I'm very, very confident that real estate from here to the next five years will give an annualized return of uh, 12 to 15%. Uh, now, real estate sector is just not only that the construction sector which uh, suffered, but real estate sector is an important part of an economy. It has its role to play in the building up of GDP numbers, job creation, economic activity, the the you know, steel industry, cement industry. Probably it is it is one sector which is very vibrant, and unless it ticks, uh, probably there is not you know, a push that will get in the GDP numbers. Can you enumerate a few steps the government is taking or what exactly the government is doing to encourage construction or real estate sector? What is that you can tell briefly for the benefit of our viewers? See, sensing the opportunity, the government started rationalizing certain uh, you know, taxation laws and other issues way back in 2019. The first among them was uh, the GST provisions. Prior to 2019, GST was 12% on the real estate. Now it has been brought down to 1% for affordable segment. Affordable segment has been defined as any apartment which is below 90 square meters of carpet area or the value of which is below 45 lakhs. Mm -hmm. So there the GST is only 1% instead of earlier 12%. And for all other categories of residential, it is 5%. For the commercial property, it continues to be 12% as it was earlier. So the rationalization of GST was a big boost to the real estate sector. That's point one. Point two, the government had come with an affordable housing policy. And uh, for the EWS segment especially, government is uh, having a credit link subsidy scheme even uh, on at the current moment. And in this uh, EWS category for CLSS, the category is little smaller. So like uh, 60 square meters uh, and below. And some subsidies are given by the government for the very poor so that they also are part of the uh, real estate sector. Prior to this, till 2021, there was CLSS for mid-income and high income. And uh, many of the home buyers took the opportunity of that. And each one of them saved around 2,40,000, 2,50,000 
under that CLSS scheme. So these were all the triggers which actually happened with the policy uh, initiative. And now, once the policy initiative has started uh, showing its effect, government has not done any further changes in the policy matters to either further promote or to take any further steps of increasing GST. But whatever steps have been taken is good enough to keep this uh, growth uh, moving forward. The other important regulation which the government introduced was the Real Estate Regulation Act to bring in the confidence of the home buyers into the real estate market. And a lot of people had uh, earlier bought apartments with builders and never got the possession of their apartments. Now, all that is uh, a history. Now, under the Real Estate Regulation Act, no such activities can take place. And even if a builder defaults for whatever reason, out of insolvency or out of death of the person, there are enough and sufficient safeguards in the Real Estate Regulation Act to take over the project by either ERA and hand it over to some other builder so that the building is completed and the home buyers get their apartments. So now if you look at summarize the current situation, A, GST is very moderate and uh, very affordable. B, Real Estate Regulation Act gives you full protection so you can uh, straight away go ahead and book your apartment with a builder who has RERA registration for uh, the project. And uh, this is a very, very conducive you know, environment for people to buy their homes or look at real estate as an investment. I fully agree with you, Mr. Mehta, because in the past, so many people have lost money. See, people coming to this line, they see the real estate price moving up. Uh, somewhere the greed picks up and without doing enough due diligence and people get moved by that lure of returns and they pour money and at the end uh, they'll have a, a very bad experience. For any industry to thrive and grow and you know make meaningful strides in, in the life's journey, uh, proper regulations are a must and it's happy to know that India has taken the first step. Uh, like any other country, India will also learn through its mistakes. Probably we let's hope that over the years, more meaningful steps will come. And as the situations develop, probably real estate too will become more clean sector for people to invest money. Uh, Mr. Mehta, we had an interest rates which were very benign till about two years back where the home loan rates had dropped down to close to about 6.5%. Everybody was encouraged. Whether they bought homes or not is a secondary issue and the downside of real estate had its impact. But today, real estate is looking up. On the contrary, the interest rates on the home loans has peaked around nine and a half. Right? Is it a hindrance for the growth of this industry? Uh, as a realtor, as a uh, economic advisor, what do you think might pan out in the next five years? See again, if you recall a discussion we had in one of your previous episodes on this subject, I had given a clear-cut distinction how. In a developed country, vis-a-vis -vis developing country, the real estate behaves when interest rates are moving up or moving down. And I had mentioned this very clearly, and I do recall some of the comments by some of your viewers that how when the interest rate is moving up, real estate can go up. And that exactly the distinction I had brought about earlier, that ours is a developing economy. The demand for real estate is genuine. We have more and more urbanization happening and more and more demand is there for people to own their first home, leave alone a second home or as an investment product. So what happens is when there is a cost push effect and even the demand is growing on the other side, the cost is passed on to the consumers because there's so much demand. And uh, whatever is the rate of inflation or whatever is the rate of interest, real estate normally gives plus 5% above the rate of interest. That, that's the norm which we have seen earlier also. So if your interest rate is, uh, say, when I say interest rate, I look at the government uh, treasury bond. Today, treasury bond is at around 7.5%, plus 5%. So 12.5% price increase is a done deal in this scenario. And if the inflation is very benign, you as you referred rightly two years back, the rate of interest was much lower. That time, the uh, bond yield was uh, sub 5%. So the real estate was slightly sluggish in terms of pricing. But now, as the interest rates have started moving up, the demand has also started picking up. The builders are able to pass on all the cost inflation which is there 
and uh, that's the way the price is seen growing at 11 percent for the current year so i feel the interest rate will remain little high for the next two years so as the real estate you know demand and the increase in prices uh, Mr. Mehta, I'll take a deviation from our topic for a while. I know that I can ask you any questions. I know the level of knowledge you come with. You can speak very, very authoritatively on any subject I can pick up for. One thing which always bothers me and our clients as well as the community of NRICs, where is the long-term interest rates in India are headed? We have seen uh, in the 80s until mid-90s uh, interest rate at 14%. And over the next decade, the interest rate slowly started dropping and they came down to 5.5% by 2007, 2008. Then we saw in one uptick on interest rate cycle, which moved it up to 9.5%. The last cycle brought it down up to 4.5%. And this cycle, up cycle, has taken it up to 7%. And now we are staring at one more down cycle. As a keen observer of Indian economy and a man who thinks and acts, uh, where do you feel the Indian uh, interest rates are headed to both inflation as well as interest rate? Of course, I will not hold you responsible. It is difficult to predict. But as a long-term trend, finally, 10 years from now, where do you think the interest rates will settle down in India? See, you know, interest rate is also a play of various economic para factors and it follows a particular cycle. But interest rate cycle is a much longer cycle. So you see these once in uh, 12 years or 16 years, the interest rates picking up, picking out and uh, bottoming out. What you saw two years back was the bottoming out of interest rate. You will not see those rates for a long time to come because it's a longer cycle. So my prediction is we will be seeing interest rates anywhere between uh, if you look at say the housing rate of interest from 8% to 11% in the next 10 years. Uh, you mean to say the home loan rates? Home loan rates. To be between 8 and 11%. Yeah. And what about the uh, fixed deposit rates? Fixed deposit rates will also be anywhere between 6.5% to 8% in the next decade. In the next decade, you feel that uh, it's, it will not look at the down cycle. That, that's your gut feeling. Yeah, because we are already bottomed out and we are in the upward cycle of inflation and interest rate. And uh, real estate sector, it mimics the upward cycle of interest rate and uh, inflation. So both are in the upward cycle right now. Right. So if my one hypothesis is right, the other also has to be right. Right. Let's see how things will pan out. So we have been asking this question for every expert who is coming on my channel, people who are in responsible positions, people who are in the knowledge of uh, how to data crunching and things. Future is always uncertain. No one knows how it will pan out. But eventually, it will run through the scorecard what might happen. Let's wait for that. Uh, Mr. Mehta, finally, the crucial question is there is a buyer and he has to make a decision. Uh, you have partially answered this question. I'm again repeating this question. What should he do? Should he wait to buy his property to interest rates pulling off, hoping the property rates will come down or he should take a call today? See, the home buyer, especially the first time home buyer, should have bought their flat yesterday. And uh, if yesterday they have missed the bus, they should buy today. I don't advise them to wait for tomorrow. Because tomorrow it will be more expensive. So the message is crystal clear on that. So if you if you are a need-based buyer, take the call as early as possible. The best time was probably two years before when the interest rates were much lower. Don't hope for you know things to further improve and uh, delay it. Probably you will catch this uh, train moving much faster from here on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mr. Mehta, I just want you to change your hat for a while now. Uh, don't answer this question from your experience of a stock market expert or a real estate expert, I want you to don the hat of a financial advisor today and advise people, the community, if they have to buy the properties, what is that they have to keep in mind? The general rules and regulations. You have built so many flats. You are the chairman of Allegro Builders. Uh, you have created so many happy families through your construction activities. Uh, from the mistakes people have made, from your interaction of uh, different people, what is the advice that you have for prospective home buyers? See, I would advise A, to uh, if you are buying your first home, buy ASAP as early as possible. B, 
because of the high inflation, the salary increase will be slightly higher in this decade compared to what increases you have seen in the previous decade. And uh, we all are, uh, you know, well aware that India is going to have a decade of good growth also. So the job security situation is much better at this moment than if you had spoken to me, say, three years back. So people who are in their jobs, they would be feeling much more secure in their positions right now than just during the COVID time. So you have all the necessary requirements. You are secured in your job. Your uh, annual pay hikes will be there, which will be substantial and good. And uh, interest rates will be slightly elevated, but don't worry about that. Take a call, go ahead and buy your apartment. Uh, Mr. Mehta, there are lots of NRIs with deep pockets and they have a genuine interest to invest in Indian residential real estate. These are not the need-based properties they are looking for. They are investors. India is a very vast country. You have urban, semi-urban, grade A, grade B cities and everything. Uh, based on your knowledge of the Indian real estate, which pockets of India or the cities or the regions you feel offer them the best returns that might give by investing in rental residential real estate? See, I would uh, give an answer in two parts. One is city-wise and one is the region-wise. Okay. Now, you know, the last decade, the growth was driven by the IT sector. So the uh, cities like Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, they gave very good returns. But IT globally is slowing down. The new jobs uh, created in the IT is also slowing down dramatically. So avoid these three cities for a faster growth. You can look at Pune, which is a heavily industrial town also, along with some IT. But Pune is doing exceedingly well. If you look at Bombay, uh, MMR region, Thane, New Mumbai, doing exceedingly well. And uh, if you look at cities like uh, you know New Delhi, is doing exceedingly well. Avoid IT dependent cities. Now, if you want me to break up within the, you know, different parts of the city, so like take an example of Bangalore. Bangalore, avoid Whitefield, avoid Koramangla, avoid Sarjapur. But you can definitely look at uh, the North Bangalore, that is Yalanka, Thani Sandra areas, where huge development is happening in industrial areas and other areas. And you can look at, uh, you know, east of Bangalore, you can look at satellite cities of Bangalore like Tumkur and Ramnagaram. So those will be the growth areas in Bangalore per se. Uh, Mr. Mehta, thank you very much for your time and expertise to share your thoughts with my community of NRIs. I'm very sure from listening to you, they have got cues what they need to do. Should they wait? Should they start buying right now? Which pockets look attractive? Which pockets are not so attractive? All this information has enriched the NRA community. I will remain in gratitude to you for your kindness to come and spend time and share your valuable insight on the real estate sector. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and inviting me for this program. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, hope the episode we have done today helped you to understand the trends that are happening in the real estate sector in India. If it did give you a direction, what you need to be doing, what to expect, what might unfold in the future, please do give me a thumbs up for this particular video. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Do not forget to share these videos with your friends and relatives. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another topic, with yet another uh, expert next Tuesday. Till then, stay safe. Jai Hind. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.